Hello friends, Dr. S with Science of Salvation. In part one, we discovered the pandemic and negative thinking that is permeating in our environment right now has reached a level that we cannot control. Our thoughts and the thoughts of others permeate through magnetic fields and quantum levels to reach us and entangle us into similar thinking. However, we discovered that the mind can be greater than our thoughts and can pull us through any crisis just by thinking the right thoughts. Join me now for part two. It's a chemical warfare. Hello friends, this is Dr. S with Science of Salvation. We are in a chemical warfare and God has given us the right chemical code to be victorious in this battle. It is a powerful weapon, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. It is that weapon that God has given us. It is a choice weapon and it's free. The weapon is called the mind. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We become what we think. You can either will yourself to health and wellness or you can will yourself to poor health and die. What is the will? It is your power of choice. So let's talk about this weapon. First of all, let's understand that the mind is independent from the brain. The mind is not the brain. They are not the same. Your brain is an organ in your body. Your mind feeds your brain. Thus, your brain is the instrument of your mind. Just like food is an external substance to feed the body, Therefore, whatever you eat and drink converts into chemicals that feed the whole body. So too with the mind. It is also an external entity that feeds the brain. So whatever you think about converts to chemicals that feed the brain. And the brain sends that chemical message to various parts of the body to build a variation of networks for our emotional, mental, and physical being. A clinical study was conducted to show the powerful effects of human thinking. A select group of regular participants were, who uh, suffered with depression were invited to take part in this study. This group was divided into two so that there would be a placebo controlled group who would receive the sham or fake medicine. As a result, and after the time allotted for the medicine to take effect, the placebo group claimed to also feel a big difference and improvement in their mental health. The placebo group were able to supply healthy chemicals to their own brain proteins just by thinking themselves well. Each time they took the placebo, they just knew they were getting better and better every day. This activity began to fire and wire together networks of healthy brain neurons that also promoted life-giving blood to the tissues and organs. So they were feeling a sense of general good health. So what happened in this research? Obviously, the placebo group, upon hearing how well the medication would make them feel, walked away believing it. Their belief in wellness of mind brought them exactly what they thought would happen. This research proved the power of belief. That as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. This is a biblical science that has been proven. For any science to be true, it must first be biblically founded. The Bible is our foundation for all true science. 
Friends, you are your best pharmacy. Every thought evokes electrical and chemical activities in the brain. Therefore, you are your best medicine. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Proverbs 17 verse 22. You see, friends, your brain doesn't know the difference of whether or not you're in a real physical or life-threatening crisis. It only reacts to the chemicals that your thoughts produce. You can evoke crisis chemicals of fear and danger by not monitoring what you're thinking about, by not being aware or present, and allowing your thoughts to go to places of fear, doubt, and morbidity. By thinking such thoughts, you raise your cortisol levels, which on a long-lasting continuous level will bring toxic chemicals to the mind, the brain, and the body. Thus, you've made yourself more vulnerable to mental and physical diseases. But by a change of thought, you can stop the process. You can build proteins full of oxytocin and dopamine and serotonin and endorphins. These give a sense of and feeling of joy, contentment, and peace to your mental well-being. They elevate your mood, improve focus and concentration, and pours liquid love into your heart. That's how powerful your thoughts are. This prescription costs nothing, and you can write and refill your own prescription anytime, any place, just by thinking the right thoughts. So, if you're having prevalent thoughts that intrude upon you every day and you just can't seem to get rid of them, thoughts of guilt, feelings of shame, are you worrying about a new career choice? Maybe your education, the bills, the loss of a job, maybe a family member or a friend. Are you fretful about what the future might hold and where do we go from here? Stop. Pause, capture your thoughts and bring them into captivity and turn them into chemicals of peace and safety. Today, right now, wherever you are, whether you're at home in your living room, yet living in fear and fright, or whether you're overlooking the peaceful ocean, but yet thinking about that argument yesterday, ruminating over grievances, loss, grief. I want you to begin to think about your thoughts and the patterns and practices of your thinking. Capture your thoughts, bring them into captivity, redirect them to the fondest memories you can find and allow the healing chemicals of love, peace, growth, and safety to bathe your brain cells. Remember this, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is the opposite of love. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. 1 John 4 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So perfect love will cast out fear. Philippians 2 verse 5. I love this scripture. It's one of my favorites. It says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ. Now, if you invite him to control your mind every day, the mind of God will do your thinking for you. With his mind, you can think yourself well, for he wishes above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Third John, verse two. For he sent his word, friends, to heal you and deliver you from destruction. Psalms 107, verse 20. 
So ask God to search you. Let him in, invite him in to do the searching for you. You don't do the searching. That is not your part. It is God who searches you by your requesting of him to do so. So pray this prayer. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see what lies deep within me. Show me and lead me. Ask God, where are these thoughts coming from? Why do I have them? Why do I keep repeating the same old thoughts? Why am I thinking this way? God wants to dialogue with you. So for now, I want to show you a quick remedy to start building chemicals that promote physical health and mental well-being. This awareness allows you to cast down negative thoughts and imaginations. Now, in my next video, part three, I will share with you in a more scientific, detailed way how it all comes together, how it all works. So right now, let's just go to Philippians 4, 6 through 9. If you have your Bibles with you, go there with me. I want to leave you with some hope. This is a beautiful Bible therapy, and I call it CBT+. Plus. That's cognitive biblical therapy plus so much more. Be careful now. Be careful. As you read this, I want you to, to think about what you're reading about. It starts off by saying, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So immediately, as you begin to feel a sense of anxiety, you begin to feel worry, you start fretting, you start thinking about those thoughts that pervade you from day to day, moment by moment. You, instead of entertaining those thoughts, you now turn the very thought into a prayer. You turn to God. This is the supplication. You start to talk to him about it. You allow God to now give you, as the verse says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Just because you turn that anxiety, that worry into a prayer, peace comes. His word does not return void. It will accomplish that which it is sent to. Right after that, the scripture here says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, of good report, that's good news, receive good news. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So you're going to God and you're giving him praise. You're going to God and you're giving him thanks even though you're letting him know what is on your mind and what it is that's worrying you. He promised to give you peace as a result. And then he tells you how to think, what to think about, what things to fill your mind with. This is a beautiful therapy. And then verse nine, which is, oh, it is amazing. Verse nine is so full of science. It says here, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, who is me? We're talking about Christ. You cannot practice what you don't know. So you need to get to know who Jesus is. You need to read, you need to understand, you need to pray, you need to talk to him and dialogue and know his character so that those things you're learning and receiving and hearing about him, it goes on to say, do. Basically, that means practice them, practice them. As you practice them, you're starting to build new networks. You're receiving chemical, uh, a, a beautiful chemical exchange going on right now. As you practice these behaviors, it's beautiful. As you practice having the mind of God take control of you and do the thinking for you. And then the God of peace shall be with you. Isn't that a beautiful passage of scripture? While we cannot always control the chemical warfare of our external environment, you, yes, you, you can control your internal environment 
by way of choice. You can do all things, friends, through Christ who strengthens you. So take hold of the mind of God. Let his mind be in you. He will keep you aware, alert, and conscious of your thoughts. This is a prayer I pray every day. And I say, God, just ring that little bell inside of my mind when I'm going astray. Ring that little bell inside of my mind that says I have thought a wrong thought. When I'm entertaining wrong thoughts, ring that bell and awaken me to consciousness and he will do it. He is an amazing God and he loves the interactions between humanity and himself. When God shows you the deep things that perplex you about yourself, it's not for you to curl up and die and, and cry out and say, woe is me, I'm no good, I failed again and again. You must dialogue with God about it. There is no shame in talking to God about these things. No shame whatsoever. God is a God of truth and he wants to reveal the truth about yourself so that you can see yourself and know that you, you've got to turn to him. There is no other choice. There's no shame in talking to God about the truth of who you really are. That's the only way to exchange the destructive chemicals and replace them with healing chemicals. He is the best pharmacist. He knows how to mix the potions and how to regulate them to your very needs. You won't want to miss the next video presentations. In parts three through five, we're going to go deep. You will begin to understand where your thoughts come from, why they reoccur, and what part you play in the process of restoration. So start praying now for God to open your understanding because you're going to see yourself in a way you may have never seen yourself before. Remember this by beholding. Hallelujah. By beholding, we become changed. If you change your thoughts, you will change your mind. If you change your mind, you will change your life and live.